Hey, 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 Superior Shea fans, another humans, how you doing today? It's a, a mostly quiet commercial building on uh, Friday, November 12. If I didn't get a chance to say it to you on Thursday, November 11, and you serve this country, thank you for your service. Customer bought this. Well, first he bought a couple of days ago, uh, Adobo 3680, the 6.8 version of the Burger Chalot. Uh, he is a barber, and I will put his link here, if I could find it, through the magic of editing. Um, he's a barber in Louisiana, and now he purchased this razor, the 46581, which is one of the short razors called Barbarossa. I think that has something to do with being a barber, that word. And um, this one says moustache on the front of it, and he asked for it to be further honed. And this is a little short razor with a round head, so like less than two centimeters cutting edge and a round head. Conceivably that thing could get into tight spaces really well. Now his first razor was a 300 something dollar razor and he asked for it to be further honed. So, and it's got the gold spine. I didn't want to go crazy with the, the method that I've been using lately. But being as this razor is more of a working man's razor and he is in fact a working man as a professional barber, uh, always nice to see a, a professional barber using a forged razor. I don't, it's, it goes state by state, but a long time ago when I talked to someone for the state of Florida, their point was you can't sterilize a strop. So everything would have to be kosher coming to the strop, which means you basically have to have a fleet of razors because they're always in the process of getting cleaned and then they're, they're perfectly clean as they get introduced to the hone in the strop. So a barber would have to be touching it up a lot. Uh, sounds like a lot of maintenance to me. As you may know, if you follow this channel, I believe that the advantage to honing a straight razor comes from making the bevel itself, instead of an isosceles triangle, a concave shape so that the tip is more flexible and has a lower angle. Mostly the flexibility is the important part. And how do we get that? We use a, a wheel, but they don't make wheels anymore for honing. They used to have them in, in as late as the 1930s, but now we only have uh, bench stones. So we rub the bench stone against a reference shape to get a piece of a wheel. Here, my little reference square. So I have a proprietary Mr. Superior Shave invented sandpaper holder. It's a sandpaper holder. You can't buy it because I don't have any stock of it. Maybe I'll sell it one more time. We'll see. Uh, I want to sell it, but it's very difficult to manufacture this thing cheaply and people are cheap bastards and they don't realize how wonderful it is. So this is a 9 by 11 by 1 half inch thick piece of uh, aluminum and you put sandpaper on it and then you rub your rectangle on the sandpaper and eventually your rectangle takes on the shape of that thing. Now going across the short axis of that thing it makes quite a very short wheel. A wheel of about six and a half feet. Which, trust me on this, when you shave with a cutting edge that was honed on a six and a half foot diameter wheel, you will feel the difference versus a razor that was honed as an isosceles triangle if the only thing you changed was the shape of your abrasive. You will feel the difference. So what I want to do for this customer is I want to use this stone, which is for sale for 200 and something dollars on the website. It's so expensive because it's goddamn awful work to have to labor this thing. You cannot imagine how difficult it is to take this little dense Nor Norton, um, Arkansas translucent stone and shape it to that thing. It's brutal, brutal work. It's much, much harder than just flattening a stone. I'm going to use this to thin the hone because at the factory, they don't, they don't thin the razors as much as they could, simply because they don't have a wheel anymore. If they could get uh, Norton to make them a six inch wheel that was made of Arkansas stone, I have no doubt that they would sit there and thin those bevels on the Arkansas stone, and then they would go to the flat stones that they've shaped into uh, wheel patterns. Uh, a long time ago, there used to be available from uh, the abrasives companies, uh, stones made as a wheel shape and then they would put a hole in the center of the wheel and you would have the hole attached to a spindle on a pulley and then at your foot would be a, th th there'd be a hole going into the hone and then the, uh, the, the, little, the hone would have a trough of water and then there'd be a belt going to the floor and with another wheel and down here at the floor another belt going to where your foot is and then you'd have one of those old-fashioned sewing machine things and the guy honing, the guy or girl, would just sit there and move that thing very slowly and you know 30, 40, 50 RPM, something very slow like this and they would hold the razor against the the wet 
uh, fine, small hone, and that would be the step number one of thinning the razor. So when you see today in videos of the Solingen razor factories, or if there's a Sard anywhere, where they're using stropping belts and stuff, they're not actually touching the edge yet. They are just thinning the area that's right behind the edge, between what they call the belly and the edge. They're getting the whole razor as thin as possible and leaving a space on the front of it that's just a perfect rectangle. And then they're going to their wheels and shaping that thing into the shape that we, we use. But it could be thinner, they just don't have the tools and they don't have the labor. They could sit there with one of these things like I do and thin the crap out of it, but then the razor would be really expensive. So what I'm going to do is thin this customer's razor and thin my own razor. This is a uh, NTS Zollingen uh, stainless steel one, and I have made it uh, the concave way, but I have never uh, sat there and truly attacked it with such a short, fine wheel like this, with this very nice curve on here. So let's get to work, why don't we? And I am going to um, put some Vaseline on that razor so that it uh, resists the natural tendency for it to get a bunch of scratch marks on it. Of course, it will have scratch marks on it because if you're going to hone flush to this to abrasive, you know, by definition, that means you're going to mark it. So my goal here is that the customer will realize how easily this thing moves on his client's beards or on his own that he will decide, you know what, I want my burger Sherlock this way too. Hell, maybe he'll start making his own stones this shape. All he has to do is buy some cheap Chinese water stones. They're easy to shape. These Arkansas stones, on the other hand, they are damn difficult. Ooh, okay. So this hone is like 52 millimeters across, and as you can see, the stone accommodates the entire cutting edge. But there's also that secondary diameter going across the two inches of about 25 feet. So you only touch a few millimeters at a time. Now I am trying to um, I'm trying to keep the angle of the spine as close to 90 degrees going across this stone as I can because this stone is shaped as six and a half feet diameter going down this five inch length and a 25 foot diameter going across its two inch width. And thusly, the shortest effective wheel that I can use on this razor is by keeping the spine perfectly parallel to the length of this stone. If I go like this, I am in effect making the effective diameter of the wheel that would be touching the razor longer. So that would mean that your contact patch on the cutting edge would go to the front of the edge, the actual edge. Right now what you're seeing me doing, I'm not actually touching the true contact, the apex of the razor. I'm touching the bevel plane between the bevel, the, between the apex of the razor and the, where the bevel ends, toward the back, toward the spine. And these have, these old Nortons, just generally I think in, in general, um, the whitish translucents uh, seem to cut a little bit faster than any of the black surgical whatever and I know that this has nothing to do with the black or the white color because I'll take a napkin and I'll compare how much swarf I have in a napkin after running on a razor a razor on a stone for a while. So the, the, the white ones they always retain a little bit of a biting cutting sensation even though they're very fine too. They may not be gun to my head a thousand percent as fine as the black ones, but because their feedback is a little bit more active and they seem to cut faster, I think that they're better stones. Plus, if you ever go to sell it, when you have a white one and you can show a picture of a flashlight coming at it and the flashlight glowing on the side of the stone, that's a good benchmark to guarantee a minimum level of hardness. Back in the time of this stone, 
Norton slash Pike, they didn't have multiple names for their hard one. They just had soft and hard as far as Arkansas stones. And then later on, they started putting the word translucent. This is before they called them translucent, but it doesn't really matter. As I said, I put Vaseline on the razor, hoping to keep these stray marks of abrasives floating around in this milky solution from marking up the razor too much. You can't uh, make a tomlet without spilling some Greggs, right? Or whatever they said in succession. You can probably tell that I am touching the uh, toe area mostly at this moment. And I just want to get to the point where when I wipe off the Vaseline and take a look, I see fresh scratches starting from the rear of the bevel and permeating their way toward the toe. Sorry, not the toe, the apex of the razor, right? In a perfect world, I guess it would be better if this was a soft Arkansas, or even better would be one of the Washita stones, because the Washitas are finer than the soft Arkansas, but also faster cutters in my opinion. So you want a fast and f the, the, the faster the minimum speed of the stone and the, um, the finer the cutting action at that minimum speed, that is what makes a great hone to me. So in the world of the Belgian Cotecule, I want I don't care about the speed on slurry. I want to know what's the minimum speed. That's the really important thing. And the minimum cutting speed on the white Arkansas that are hard is consistently better, no matter how you prepare the surface, than the black ones. Of course, you know that my black one I'm about to break out is 3 by 10 inches. So that makes up for a hell of a lot of speed variances, doesn't it? It also took me four months to shape that wrap bastard. Okay, I'm reasonably certain that we have some fresh scratch marks. I'm just going to wipe it and take a look with my loop. Indeed, I made some new scratches. Uh, yeah, it would be great if I could make a soft Arkansas that was four by two inches by one inch or five by two inches by one inch that uh, is this very aggressive shape. Uh, as you may know, I bought a couple of weeks on eBay an 8 by 2 inch by 1 inch mounted one. And uh, here it is. Heavens to Betsy, I, I cannot tell you how many hours I've worked on this thing. Thankfully a piece broke off. That That's like the best thing that ever happened to me. Because now it's only about 7 inches long. But I still got all that area there. And I don't know. I, you, when the, when the job gets really bad, you just block out that awful labor, but I don't need that long space to get this effect. A 4 by 2 inch stone that's shaped as a 2 meter wheel will work exactly as good to the razor as a 10 inch stone will. Uh, the person holding the razor on the stone might have a harder time balancing on the smaller pitch, but um, for me, the width of the stone is a lot more important than the length of the stone, so I would love a 3 inch wide and 4 inch long soft Arkansas so that I didn't have to sit there grinding that bastard for the rest of my life and I could still have the wide piece, but nobody makes such a thing. So um, I will hope to find a 4x2 that's 1 inch thick because uh, even at 4 by 2 inches, you're still grinding off a considerable amount of that stone. And if you start with the half inch thick one, 
you're going to need to glue that to something to give it some more height. Otherwise, your knuckles are going to be bonking into your workspace all day long. Can't have that when you're making a living, right? I could give a shit what this razor looks like as far as scratch patterns. I didn't put any Vaseline on this razor. I am just trying to thin the razor's bevel. And then we will switch to the famed black Arkansas stone, which is shaped the other direction versus that plate thing at the beginning of the video. So that one has a 25 foot principal axis and a secondary axis of six and a half feet. And what that does is when you face the long direction on that stone, you are immediately going to the very front of the razor if the razor was honed on a shorter wheel. And then when you angle your spine off axis on that stone, you are shortening your effective wheel. So those are the opposite of this one. Oh no, did I lose my nice quiet office? I work in a commercial building and there's a lot of noisy neighbors and um, a lavalier mic is great, but there's nothing like quiet and no lavalier mic. But uh, I may not have hustled enough here. All right, guys, I'm going to clean up this stone with a little bit of soap and water. And then I am going to switch to the famed finisher. In case you were wondering, this is a mixture of ballastol and water. I don't keep a scoreboard. It's somewhere between five and one and 10 and one parts water to ballastol. I would say closer to the 10. Alrighty, let's do what this thing does. When I switch to this, because I've been using it so long now, I go entirely by feel. And I have found that I get a better feel to chase putting the razor in the stropping motion, as you see right now, as opposed to the traditional honing motion like this. So I mostly go backwards. And then at the end, I just do a little bit of going forwards. That's a little thick. I need to add just a little bit of water. And remember, you're honing on a wheel. You're just honing on a little piece of a wheel. So you don't try to go flat and level across the top. As I go toward the direction, I try to twist ever so slightly with my right thumb and index finger to drive the cutting edge into the surface.
Well, the silence was nice while it lasted, Superior Shea fans and other humans, but we have a new sheriff in town. Actually, it's the same old sheriff. And she is... So early on when I switch to this finisher, I typically do this stropping motion with the razor facing 90 degrees to the 25 foot axis so that um, I can get some of the feel of this stone right on the apex of that cutting edge. And then I start to do what you see me doing now. This is the part that's hard to teach. And where, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm deliberately moving away from 90 degrees to use the stone as a smaller wheel, just small enough to get behind the actual apex of the edge and into the small area of the bevel where the bevel will flex to this stone. So a bevel on a razor like this is about eight tenths of one millimeter from the apex toward the spine and um, about one tenth of that zone perhaps or maybe one twentieth let's say will be narrower than one tenth of a millimeter in thickness and in that area if you touch it just right it bends and if you slow this down I have no doubt you can see that bending so I'm convinced that bending is good for a person shaving if they're awake when they're shaving I think it causes the last little bit of the razor edge to extrude outward as far as possible from the spine and become very thin and fragile. But that's okay because if you strop it well and you do not bring your razor at a steep angle or toward a dry beard or a coarse beard that was not prepared properly, it will cut right through that, bending but not breaking. I'm going to do a little bit more of that and then I just finish by going a few strokes toward the cutting edge again at 90 degrees just to make sure if we built up a little bit of a wire edge that we didn't uh, leave it behind. Although to be honest, I would imagine this dropping wipes that right off. But we're making the razor so damn thin that it doesn't matter that we uh, wipe away some of our work by moving edge toward and with a larger wheel again. Uh, in the history that I've researched, it does say that a truly expert grinder would only use a very small wheel. And in fact, I have read of a book from uh, 1809 that says, it was from England, and it says that a, a grinder would use one wheel that was just seven inches in diameter. Imagine that, just seven inches. So you can't have a seven inch diameter expressed as your cutting edge for the entire length of the bevel. That would just break apart like a dandelion. That's too damn thin. So what did they do? They started by holding on the seven inch wheel for a little while like this to make a whole edge, right? And then they would freehand lift the spine of the razor off of the wheel a little bit to make a secondary and then they would finish with the spine of the razor more off the wheel. And what that does is that would make an imaginary larger wheel for the front of the apex of the razor. But they did it all by freehand over the course of three steps. This is my block of wood. It is also shaped like that hone that you just saw. And I put it behind the strop like that.
All right, Superior Shave fans, this is me shaving with the razor that you just saw me hone in the video that was released just prior to this one that's over there codifying. I'm going to use this prototype silver tip brush uh, from the Rhein-Dosch people. And uh, how about my little French pre-shave oil, which, uh, pre-shave soap. Uh, it's getting a little glistener, glisser in the... It's back, super fans. The Zarka Full Shaving Soap is back. And uh, it's in this container now, but... 200 milliliters, so no more tin container, a plastic container. Before I forget, it's back in stock, so you better run and get it. The Prince Charming Balm. You just take a little dollop of this shea butter stuff and you rub it into your wet skin. I like to put a little toner on afterwards, but if you just wait about a half hour, it soaks in. It's expensive. This little thing is 40 bucks, but I started this one. I, I use it all the time. I started it right before the pandemic, um, the week of the Super Bowl of uh, 2020. And so, look, here we are. Almost two years later, I still got a dozen shaves or so in there. 
and I'm a bit too liberal with it, so it's not really that costly and, and running cost, just buy-in. And I like to take the cute and mundane facial tonic and just put a little bit on there. Get rid of that excess fat on your skin. Ooh, that is some good stuff. Okay, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.